Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you one of my favorite, if not the favorite, fly for Greylink and I'm inspired to, about that because one of my viewers in the, for my last video, previous video, uh, asked me like what's my best producer for Greylink and I told him, well, this fly and is there any fly that will catch Greylink all the time? I say yes, this one probably will catch it in most times. Now, this one and few others that I will show you from my box later on, this is, as you can see, grailing box, uh, are my top producers and I will explain why and how I fish them and when I fish them. So let's first tie this fly and at the end of the video I will also provide you with, uh, all, the with all the materials I used and I will also mention them as I tie them in. So now I'm going to tie Coq de Leon. Just make the length as you like it, not necessary to be exact. I mean one hook length or one shank length or one and a half lengths, like whatever you like. Uh, don't use too much because on such a small fly just a couple of Coq de Leon uh, hurls will be plenty because it's stiff and it will support your fly pretty pretty well. Now before you reach the bend of the hook you can take some body material which is medium olive antran and take just a small pinch you don't need much I mean translucent one is okay. Uh, when you apply this dubbing I will show you like when you pinch it out there is like a thick part and there is a thin part. Put the thin part near the hook so when you spin it around the thin part will actually be at the rear end of your on of your hook and uh, the thick part will be towards the head so that's how you will create nice taper you, you can see that it's tapered uh, already so the reason why i stayed behind is because i want to catch this antron first so like this and now when you go forward you can a little bit you can tighten it a little bit if you need and you can control with a thin noodle you can uh, more easily control the shape of the body of your fly so this is more or less perfect nicely tapered now we need to attach wing material and for that I'm using just one CDC feather since the fly is quite small nice CDC feather with flat tips and just Take it like from the eye and extend it a little bit back. It's easy to cut it if it's too long, but you cannot extend it if it's too short. So with, this is two, three over it, and then go in front two. That's more or less it for the tying in of CDC, and it's quite durable at this point. Now, for the legs, there are a couple of things you can use. Uh, hair's ear, definitely my uh, one of my favorite materials. Squirrel, hair's body dubbing, or one of mixtures that you make or you buy, whatever. I'm using this squirrel mixture because squirrel is a little bit more, it's, it's finer than a rabbit, so uh, I like to use it on smaller flies. And very important thing when uh, making fly that will catch fish all the time well not one fly it's series of flies in different sizes different sizes is the imperative here why because with general pattern like this like olive pattern is a general pattern uh, you can actually cover a lot of insects and with sizes with different sizes you can actually cover even more insects and that's very important because fish usually will eat anything that floats around them at least to try it and if it's not the right size they will refuse it color i mean i've even saw uh, trout eating leaf and spitting it out afterwards so they're not so picky as people think of course on some occasions they're extremely picky but on some they're not so in order to lift those wings go back with your thorax material so one, two, three, as many as you need. So now I can remove some of this and then one, two, that's it. So 
any angle between 45 and 90 degrees is fine for the wings. I don't like when people do this. This looks more like a caddis fly to me with wings like this. I mean, it has tail, but it looks like a caddis fly and it probably looks like a caddis fly to the fish. So after you do a wood finish knot, well, I do two because I don't do any varnish here. After you do the wood finish knots, you can brush out this, these legs a little bit, but be careful because this is tiny fly. You don't want to brush out the body, so just brush out those legs a little bit. So it will have this footprint, proper footprint when it lays on the water. This is finished fly as you can see, and now I will show you my favorite graming flies for you who stayed here longer. As you can see, like there are not many in my box and I will just pick a couple of them like after this fly two if, if I have to fish two flies these two are the ones I choose hot butt caddis uh, is one of the best 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 producers for graving in these small sizes this is also size 18 but different brands so different sizes as you can see or this may be even 20 I'm not sure never mind anyway uh, pink tag orange tag red tag they all produce fish I like pink tag right now but I loved orange before so who cares it's not that important as you can see I have different pink tag here some UV pink and I have orange tag here and now let me show you something regarding those mayflies so you can make them like this simple this is just thread and CDC and some coctelion like I used literally one thread for the body for the head that's it like one two layers wings and tail and that's it this is one of the best flies I, I can find for grayling definitely now another pattern that I really really like is of course pheasant tail and pheasant tail I like to do in parachute in a CDC version like this one so uh, apart from olive brown there is one more color I really adore and I love it for grayling and this is some kind of creamy yellowish light olive it's bad lighting here so I, I cannot show it so it's like cream thread waxed with uh, bee, bees wax so this is what I like to use so as you can see I have pheasant tails as always and I have those only ones and cream ones now when it comes to other flies those emergers shuttlecocks are also amazing flies I, I, I make them this high-vis version I have a video about that as well and then, then I will show you another one this one I use like for all fish this is like heron's hurl ribbed with a yellow thread again shuttlecock style and I use these in 20 and 18 of course not a single fishing can be without ants so this is size 22 I'm not sure parachute so let me find something else sorry guys for waiting oh yeah Sometimes when I want to brag, I just show this fly, like parachute on number 32. This is sick, I know. And now, a very, very special fly as well. This one was, like, in the battle. So it's chewed out, in and out. And this is CDC and elk. And this one had a lot of fish over it. This is, like by far the most universal caddis pattern I know because even though like you don't need to vary any any colors this will cover most of the caddis hatches this fly literally brought me so many fish uh, that it is incredible not this this one but this pattern and I like to have it between 20 and 10 sizes and I cover like if I have to 
choose just two flies or three flies it's gonna be the olive one it's gonna be this one and it's going to be pink tag because pink tag can cover terrestrial so terrestrial flies as well because of that buggy shine that the peacock has so this is how I cover like I use one green or olive call it as 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 you wish then I use uh, pheasant tail for darker flies and I use cream color for lighter flies so that, that's just three flies for mayflies you don't need more than that then for caddis flies you can use this one and you can use this uh, hot pot caddis that I showed you and that's more or less it you don't need more than that I mean just vary in size and that's it sometimes when you need a wet fly you can just pluck out these fibers from here like take half of it and just dive it in and use it as a wet that's it like adapt uh, to the current conditions on the water that's what makes you better fisherman now <laughs> let's see oh yeah another ant this is my favorite ant pattern uh, and this ant brought me like in 2017 when I was competing in Slovakia uh, the best placing I had was fifth place and I was using this ant and literally this caddis and I got 20 something 24 graylings in one session all on one on uh, dry flies and uh, I didn't even catch a single one on a nymph so as you can see here uh, antron black antron for the body here if you have some nice uh, spiky dubbing you can use for legs black then definitely two strands of flash and CDC and that's it like the most simple perfect ant that I know of I don't like to varnish them it's like really really forbid my language pain in the ass to varnish so many flies and this looks more buggy and more natural to me if you ask me and this this butt like this so this is more or less it uh, I will just go through my box which is well half full or half empty as you wish so I'll go slowly I mean it's a bit out of focus as you can see but you can see different flies here the yellow one is not mine sorry so now I have some 20s this is like 32 I guess these spent flies and then again some 30 somethings and some sick clink hammer on 32 as you can see parachute and then I have some caddis flies here now just let me insert this one okay and on the in the next row I have mayflies which are almost empty as you can see so I have pheasant tails here 20 18 and then I have some olive parachutes then I have some shuttlecocks here and then just thread uh, mayflies that I showed you previously and then I have that creamy emergers I think I did video on these and this is I'm not sure what it is oh, okay this is body quill olive fly so just a variation of this one it looks fantastic as you can see um, you can sometimes if you don't see well you can put like lower CDC to be darker and the upper one to be white so you can see it and the lower darker one is for the fish and the white one is for you then I have some spents let me just show you them this is like a spent fly red, red spent also quill and I attached some hives between wings it cannot be seen from the bottom but it can be seen from the top so spent that's very easily visible like without this it won't be so visible so when it comes to presentation just give me a minute or two uh, when it comes to presentation just use as thin tippet as possible with these small flies and because it will get more natural drift like the thicker the diameter of your tippet the more springy it will behave and more unnatural your fly will be the thinner the, the tippet all those micro currents will fold it and do whatever they want with it and your fly will actually behave more naturally uh, of course you cannot go below a certain size because like if the railings are big they will just break everything 
off so we have to think about that as well uh, so I think that like some golden middle for everything is just let's say 0 0.12 and I think it's like most the most useful tippet for most fish that I fish at least and these are fish like up to 50 cm maybe so the tippet length I noticed that many people make it too short like 50 cm or 60 cm or even 70 cm that's like way too short in my opinion I like to stretch my arms as I as much as I can and take that length for the tippet and that's like about 170 I think sometimes I, I mean it's everything between 120 centimeters and 150 or 180 is fine for me depending on the type of water like the more broken the water the longer the tip the water if the water is less broken if it's more like flat and uniformed I, I can shorten my tippet to improve my hook rate uh, pro, like transfer energy and stuff but just like it's better to have longer tippet than shorter one definitely and uh, definitely what's what, what else is, is important it's uh, learn how to reach cast uh, learn how to mend learn how to do slack cast and that's what's going to help you catch more fish you don't need to know some fancy casts but these things you need to know so guys thank you very for you for those of you who stayed all the way through the whole video thank you very much for watching for those of you who haven't well thank you too and hope to see you again guys and hope you like this video if you have any suggestions or questions please do not hesitate and ask them so thank you again and see you next week